It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at this mini PC. That's actually like a pretty damn awesome emulation beast, but for a small price, because I love to search like the best, let's say performance for not a lot of money. And I think I got myself a hidden gem. So when it comes to small devices, especially with Android boxes, and we want to have a lot of power to our extra pros and cons, not even with, with talking about the heat, but we're also talking about the performance and the price we're going to pay for it. And Vita Shield Pro is a pretty damn piece of technology. It has a lot of potential. And also when it comes to, the, my, let's say one of the fastest boxes, the GT King from AliExpress. But both of these boxes come with a price that comes with Android. And I was thinking, why are you mentioning this? Because when you're looking at a mini PC, like this bad boy from Intel, yeah, it's basically a PC, so it has nothing to do with Android. But the idea behind it is like you're not paying a lot of money for it and it will give you better performance than both of these systems. So this is true, let's turn and check that out. But take consideration that when you're going to get into the low spec devices, you still have an, a really amazing performance because most of them like having a quad core inside, new regeneration CPUs and will use less consumption when it comes to the energy. But with this device, it's like a later model, it's not like the latest Intel. But let's take a close look inside the box itself because let's do first the unboxing and the reason i picked it up because i was thinking hey we can make a really cool retro pc machine from this tiny box so i've reviewed like similar products but the other ones were very expensive and i'm talking about three four hundred euro and this is not getting even close to that price point so it has a lot of let's say a lot of great things to it we're going to get like vga but then we're going to get two hdmi ports then we're going to get a len rg45 microphone out we're going to get a USB port over here, the input for the DC, and we're going to get another two USB 3.0 and the USB port over there, and even the option for a TF card. And not to forget, the on and off switch. All right, so let's see, there's not a lot of stuff that we're going to get. So we're going to get a very nice deluxe toilet paper manual with some explanations about the product itself, nothing really fancy. Then we're going to get ourselves the power supply in here. I just want to point out, this is just a mini PC. We're not going to get like controllers, but you're going to get with a super console of stuff like that. And here we're going to get some mounting brackets because you can mount this thing behind a monitor. So if you want to do some tinkering with it, or you want to put it in an arcade machine as a, like a dedicated, let's say emulation beast, you can basically use it for that. Okay, so what do we get? We're going to get the Intel Apollo Lake Celrom. It's named the G. 3455 it comes with whooping 4 gigabyte of ram then we're going to get 64 gigabyte of internal storage but we're not going to use it today wi-fi capabilities 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and we're going to get a support for an hdd and it's going to be a 2.5 inch model up to 2 terabyte but briefly i want to basically try to play some games on this device it's not a powerhouse it comes with not like amazing specifications but the reason i just wanted to check it out just to see if you want to play some old school games if you want to play some let's say indie games what can we play and what can it handle so let's take a close look at that first okay guys so let's start with my first game that i ever played back in the days this game can be played on so many things even including handhelds nowadays but still it's fun to play it and it runs pretty damn good you have taken the lead Ugh. three frags left all right next up Time for some Yugen, the engine where you can create your own fighting game. Yeah, it's freaking awesome that it still runs on Windows 10 and yeah, it's so much fun. And this is a revisiting because I played a lot of the Mugen engine. Let me know in the comments, did you ever play Mugen? Did you ever knew it existed? Let me know in the comments. Next up, 
Bro Force, I love this game, but this is a great example that it pushes this device to the limit. The GPU is not powerful enough. On full HD, I got like 15 frames. So messing around with the resolution, I went up to 800 by 600 old school resolution. And finally it got some better FPS. Because when you're looking at it, especially with the gameplay, you can see it still struggles big time. The loading time for Cuphead are quite long. I can say like when you compare this with my game PC, you can see like almost instant load and you didn't have this with this mini PC. But when it comes to the FPS, we're going to get a quite stable 60 FPS all the time when playing some games, including some bosses. Okay, so when it comes to the Windows part, it's not like super special, but it's still a very cool add-on if you want to do this. But what are we going to get when it comes to emulation and Badashira? So we can basically like use not 3.5 inch because this thing is too big, but we need an enclosure for that. But what we can do, we can get ourselves an SSD for this device. We can reconfigure a 2.5 inch drive. There are a lot of things that we can do with it. So let's talk about that first. So when it comes to using Balacera, there are different ways to go. So if you want to use a certain like piece of hardware, you can use it like four different ways, in my opinion. Then we're going to get ourselves the very convenient and really cool thing is an SSD. You can basically put an SSD inside your PC, install some bottle share on this bad boy, and you get to have a lot of fun. The main problem at the moment when making this video, SSDs are very expensive. Another option that we're going to get, and this is way cheaper, we can get yourself a 2.5 inch platter disc. These things are not very expensive. And yeah, if you're going to load up, you have a lot of space for not a lot of money. Another plug and play solution, if you just want to have Bodoshira, like a plug and play, you can use a basically a very easy plug and play send disc or another brand. Like you need to have a very fast port in combination with very fast a thumb drive. You can use this little Bodoshira plug and play. And of course, the last number at least, and the cheap to the cheap cheap edition is basically get yourself a 3.5 inch. But if you cannot assemble it, what you need to do is also get yourself an external enclosure. Because you basically use an external enclosure in combination with Bodoshira and USB. Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So Wicked asked me to do a quick tutorial on how to install Bodoshira on various platforms. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now we're going to do this on a USB flash drive, but you could do the same thing on a micro SD card or even an external hard drive. Most important piece is to go to the Botticera website, then go into the download section, and then find whatever platform it is you want to install Botticera on. We're going to install it on a Windows machine, so I'm going to click this X64 option here. Once we've downloaded the file, we're just going to flash it directly onto that USB flash drive. We're going to use an app called Belena Etcher to do that. In that first tab, just navigate to wherever that file is that you just downloaded. On that second tab, select whatever it is you're going to flash it onto, in this case the USB flash drive. And then on that third tab, just tap flash. It's going to say, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah man, I want to do it. It's going to take about a minute to flash. And once it's done, a bunch of windows are going to pop up. Go ahead and exit out of all of these. Now if you're using a Windows based machine like I am here, you can actually just boot directly into that flash drive from here. You want to go into the recovery options section in your settings and then go into this Advanced Startup Restart Now button. You'll have a couple different options here. Select the Use a Device, and then find your hard drive or flash drive or micro SD card, and then select that. From there, it's just gonna use that device that we just flashed. And just like that, it's loading Botticera. Now that's only one of two ways that you can actually access Botticera from a Windows machine. The other one is you can just do it from booting up. What you do is you start up your computer, and then you immediately start pressing the F12 button on a USB keyboard. And that'll open up the boot menu, and from there you can select your boot device. And just like before, we're going to select that USB drive. And just like that, it's going to boot into Botocera from there. So if you're using a Windows machine, these are the two different ways that you can access Botocera. Now once you're inside, you're going to need to add your games, and that's kind of an involved process. In a nutshell, what you want to do is you want to press the F1 key on your keyboard, which will bring up a file explorer, and from there you can move your game files from an external hard drive or even the internal hard drive on your Windows machine. And you're going to move all of these into the ROMs and BIOS folders that are located within that flash drive. Now there's a lot more to it, and if you have any other questions, I would recommend checking out some of the tutorials I have on my channel. But for now, thanks for watching, and back to you, Wicked.
What you also can do is get yourself a Super Consolix hard drive. What you're going to get is basically a 2.5 inch hard drive. Yeah, you're going to get a case and you're going to get yourself, yeah, like a preset bottle Shira. So all you need to do is add in your files. Another way you can go is the Pokey Pad. And the Pokey Pad is basically like an all-in-one solution. So if you don't want to do like a lot of searching for control or stuff like that, what you're going to get is this very nice fancy case. And inside you're going to get instruction how you need to configure everything how bottle zero works so there are some slightly some stuff that have been done you're going to get yourself two wireless controllers i think there are different models out there and this is like the more expensive places to knockoffs they're not, not the best controllers but these are not bad at all it comes with including two 2.4 gigahertz dongles then we're going to get ourselves the enclosure with the hard drive so basically you can just plug in the pokey pad with the controller add your stuff and you can go your way and not to forget the fancy casing oh yeah so this is what you're going to get with the pokey pad so basically in combination with the super console stuff this is what you can do with this but this machine has the option to add an internal hard drive so what is the very positive thing about internal hard drives you're going to get the maximum speed depending of course of the SATA connection take a consideration especially when you're using really old hardware so most of the time a hard drive will be fast enough this is in western digital blue there are different speeds out there take consideration you have like 5400 you have 7200 if i'm saying it correctly when it comes to the speed but nevertheless you're going to get the maximum speed if you're going to get yourself a fast hard drive so it's going to be more convenient when you're basically like loading up your files yeah and the ssd is the same story these things are like super expensive sometimes especially when you're going to get one or two terabytes and there are like different speeds but if yeah of course if the SATA drive can handle the speeds you will have like significant faster load times but there is another thing you can consider but let's say your old pc only has usb 2.0 and you can build your hard drive inside i would recommend doing this because it will give you so much more advantage to the speed but this device has the usb 3.0 3.0 is a very fast way and like absolutely crazy so if you want to use let's say a pokey pad this is like a super good solution or plug in your usb dongle yeah and also like this is a very tiny one this thing gets really hot but also different speeds we have here and what you can do is like plug it in you can just basically pull it out if you want to use your pc as an pc so like the things you need to consider which direction you want to go but there are a lot of different ways to go all right guys so everything has been set up the controllers the speakers everything seems to be working now so let's take a close look at the menu but what can we play that will be the question for today but let's get into the bottle Sierra. For the people who have no idea what you can play. So basically what you can play are all the retro games, even up to Wii U is possible. Seriously, like it's crazy if you think about it. But because we are basically going on the budget when it comes to the PC hardware, then we're going to get some restrictions. So what I want to focus on with this mini PC, what can we do when it comes to PlayStation Portable, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Naomi, stuff like that, Sega Saturn, but also when it comes to the MAME Arcade. Can we finally play some pretty damn decent MAME, so think about tech and tech, stuff like that, like the really demanding stuff that we can play with a Pi or with a basic Android box that costs almost the same or maybe even more. So that's what we're going to find out today and that is what we're going to test today. Alright, next up, so Killer Instinct is a system that cannot be played on Raspberry Pi 4 or you need to like start tweaking and going all crazy with overclocking, but this PC runs it without any problem. So let's boot up a game, let's fight a part of it just see what happens how stable it is and of course I'm going to get my ass whooped here but you can see like the game runs pretty damn good it's a stretch so basically in a manual we'll need to like mess around with it to put it back on 4 by 3 SPS ratio but I just wanted to give you like a quick demo how stable this game runs on a cheap PC All right, next up, Killer Stink number two. A minor hiccup there. But it was more like a loading issue. And when you're getting into the game, it runs pretty damn good. And I really suck at this game.
Okay, so next up, let's use a different game in the list. Because this is a system that doesn't run very well on low end devices most of the time. You can hear like the audio is having issues, but this is more like purely an audio problem because so far I can see like the emulation speed is pretty damn good. It's a shame about the audio, but that can maybe be fixed. Alright guys, so let's take a closer look at the Atomus Wave. And this system is playable on Android boxes, even the Raspberry Pi 4. But now we're going to talk about like systems from the same price range. So that's the reason I wanted to start off with this system, because it's still very demanding, cannot be played on super conflicts, the cheap the cheap cheap boxes. So that's the reason I just wanted to pick it up. But okay, runs pretty damn good. So let's take a close look at another system. Alright, so next up, let's play some Sacred Dreamcast. It's even forced into widescreen mode. So the screen will be filled up and not be stretched, that's the difference. I think when you're looking at like low power devices, you can maybe like push it a little bit better when it comes to the resolution, a little bit higher. But an overall performance is pretty damn good. And you can play Dreamcast without a hassle on this device. Okay guys, so when you're going to look up into the restrictions of this box, now we're going to reach it. You know, like, when we're going to get a lot of good performance with MAME, maybe with some tweaking, we're going to get Sega Saturn to run a little bit better, but this is what you're going to get with still low power devices. And by the way, this box was quite cheap in my opinion. And here we're going to see what the limitations are. Alright, so let's see how PlayStation Portable will run, because this is a system that has a lot of problem when it comes to Android boxes. But take consideration, Tekken is not like a super demanding game compared with God of War. So this is more like it's still powerful enough to run PlayStation Portable on two times resolution. And if you're going to get like in God of War, then you need like basically adding a lot of tweaks to it. Round two. All right, so next up, let's try a different game. Wipeout is a great example. It's still not like super demanding or like God of War, but it's like taking it to the next level. I can see this game runs very well. Surprisingly, pretty damn good on this cheap mini PC. So what I really like about this thing is that you're going to get a lot of value for your money. But of course, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think of that. And also when you're looking into the PlayStation 2 port, there we're going to see where is the limit of this box? PlayStation 2 is absolutely unplayable on this. And Crash Bandicoot is not even like, say, the most demanding game of the series. So and this is like the limitation, combination with Sega Saturn. But still, we can play a lot of crazy, a lot of stuff with this cheap box. Okay, so next up, let's try the GameCube. And the GameCube... It's still quite a demanding system, but there are some games that are playable on this system. And then it's what I just want to show off, it's like how capable this device is. It will hiccup here and there. It will still have maybe some issues. Here you can just hear that the audio is pretty damn slow. So this doesn't run on the full speed. Maybe if you look up some other two-dimensional games, it will get a better performance. But again, limitations are here. All 
Alright guys, so this is what we're going to get with this Intel Mini PC. I must say that I am quite surprised when it comes to the performance and of course what you're paying for it. I didn't pay a lot of money for it and we look at what you're going to get, especially when it comes to the MAME and stuff like that. You can play a lot of stuff that you couldn't play on a Super Console X or an, let's say an other cheap solution like a Raspberry Pi 4 that also similar to this price when you're basically buying the Pi and all the stuff that you're going to need. Yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this box. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. Become a Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video. Mm.